This video is sponsored by Wing Wing Technology, your ultimate fly sim hardware solution. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. For today's valued viewer request, we've got Sharpie's Lightning. Hi Cap, just found some interesting maneuver performed by the F-22 Raptor. About one minute into the video, the aircraft is performing a roll and firing a missile at the same time. Is this a way to show off or does it display just how dang good the plane is will other aircraft perform this maneuver sharpie thank you sharpie let's go and have a look okay so indeed it shows it doing aileron rolls and missiles firing out of i'm not sure which bay but one of its bays so this is interesting let me jump into dcs and we'll have a look at what other aircraft can manage as far as i'm aware it's nothing particularly special so we've got an expert to explain how this works we've now got an f16c here it just so happens we've got an f16 maintainer on the line say hello simba Hello, valued viewers. Now, for the F-16, we've only got rail-mounted missiles. So you can see, whoops, you can see we've got four AMRAMs and four Sidewinders. Sorry, two Sidewinders. And all of them are on rails, which are then mounted to pylons, which are then uh, mounted to the wing, or they're on the wingtip. We're then, after this, going to look at a Hornet, which has the addition of belly-mounted hard points for the missiles. So first, the F-16. For a rail launch, can you please tell me how that works, Simba? In fear of being ridiculed by my weapons friends at work, I'm going to do my best to explain. But essentially, the rails have holdback uh, feet inside of them that are electrically held in place. And when the signal is sent from the firing computer to the rail, it basically breaks that electrical signal it's to where the missile can overpower those feet. And it just uses the rocket motor to go down the rail and if you look at the really well modeled rails can you see kind of little almost like kind of train rails here and we've got lugs mounted on the missile that will allow it to allow it to slide along that i'm going to try and get some slow motion shots so we can see that happening so the electric hold back will signal and release and then the and then the rocket motor is going to fire so arm ourselves up and get ready to fire we're going to fire one of these amrams off okay you can see him you can see our little that little guy there grabbing onto those rails there. It's going to guide him forward under the power of the rocket and zoom! Off he goes. And that's going to happen so fast, pretty much, Simba, isn't it? That I'm going to be able to do that while rolling. That is correct. Okay, so what we're going to do now is put ourselves in a roll. Boom! And you can see, although I was doing a kind of normal type aileron roll, uh, it had no problems coming off the rail there and firing so that's rail type launchers uh anything to mention about rail type before we move on to the hard points on the actual airframe itself um this is where the computer for the fire control steps in and if you notice the computer will control will tell the airplane which is the best missile to launch so this worked good on a left aileron roll because had we had it tried to go off on a right aileron roll the motion of that rail would have, you know, affected the missile at the end of the missile's travel down the rail. Right. And it could have been bad, bad for business. Right. So, yeah. So what we did before this was we did a right aileron roll. And so that it was pushing the wing into the uh, the missile rather than pulling it away and it wouldn't launch. So what I did is the other side aileron roll uh, so that it was pulling the wing away from the missile and then it launched. So that's how that works then. That is correct. Interesting. It's nice to see that modeled in DCS, actually. Okay, very good, guys. Very good. And, you know, the Sidewinder is going to work the same as the uh, as the AMRAM in this case. And let's jump over now to the Hornet. The reason why they're showing that demonstration in the video for the 22, and you can relate this to your viewers for the F-14, how the flaps lock out if you overspeed them. Mm -hmm. So with those things being doors, there's weight, hydraulics, etc. So when you're doing that roll, you're applying an outward G-force on the doors. So they're demonstrating that even in an aileron roll, the doors will still actuate with no problem. You'll be able to fire the missile like they're not going to bind up due to G's. So they're more in, in, in that video, they're more interested in the actuation of the doors rather than the actual firing of the missile. Yes, all in one. They're trying to show that even in high aileron rolls or under G situations, the, the doors are not going to hinder the airplane from being able to form, perform the operation. Okay. And if you noticed on the 120 launches from the bottom bay, they had ejector feet pushing the missile down, hence like how you're 
going to go to the F-18. I'm on the F-18 now. We're going to have a quick look at a rail launch from the wing tip in this case. Do you think the Anaderon roll will have any effect of the launchability of a rail wing tip launch? I expect no problems. I expect no problems too. Right, just let me set it up, valued viewers. Oh, it just launched. It just went off. Now, it didn't quite model it quite right in DCS. It just kind of detached itself from the rail. That is an older style rail, but it still should r ride down the rails. Yeah, I, I, I can see the lug. So th that before. should have slid down the rail. In DCS, it, it just hasn't quite modeled that when rolling, and it just kind of slipped off. But in real life, it would slide down the rail. And again, we don't think that's going to cause any problems. Again, purely out of interest, you know if some of these aircraft have a limit limiter on the roll rate, do you reckon that's anything to do with missile launches, or do you reckon that's completely aerodynamic? It actually does factor in. The the brilliance of a lot of these fourth-gen fighters is it prevents the pilot from damaging hmm. himself, the airplane, the munitions. So, yes, the computer factors in all of that, roll rate, airspeed, angle of attack, and it does all of that, and it computes it, to, and it won't allow the munition to go unless it can safely do so. Very interesting. It's, again, something I never even thought about. So it's really cool, these, these requests. Okay, the AMRAMs, the eight AMRAMs on the wings, they are rail launched as well, so we're not going to try them. But now look at something different. The belly mounts, hard points uh, on the belly here, are very different. There is no rail to run down them. And I'm not even sure if we would have a line of sight for it to allow it to do that. What we're going to do instead is have a mechanism that pushes them out, whoosh, uh, I don't know, six feet or something like that, away from the airframe, then they'll turn on their rocket motor and fly away. Can you describe a bit of the mechanics around that? Due to the fact that the missile's going to go in its trajectory towards the target, its quickest you know, path of interest, uh, and you notice the missiles are directly connected to the body of the airplane, if, say, the left missile were needing to go off to the right of the nose, it would thus have to cross the body of the airplane. Mm -hmm. Coming off a of rail, you're going to just end up putting that missile into the nose of the airplane. So what it does is it has a uh, gas-powered uh, ejection feed. And when I say gas, it's more like shooting a blank out of a gun. It just it burns up the gunpowder, creates a gas, and it pushes the ejector feet out. The ejector feet are mated to the missile. That way it's not going to punch a hole in the missile. And so same sequence, pilot gives the command to fire the missile, uh, computer sends a signal, fires off these uh, essentially shotgun cartridges, and it pushes the missile away from the airplane, and there's a delay for the rocket to ignite. So we go upside down here. Ha <laughs> I fired them all at once by accident. But you see them go up there. And, uh, and and get ejected just as we said. Let me try that again. When you're looking at the bottom of your plane, uh, that that station five mm -hmm. or that yeah, that station five pylon in the middle. Yeah. You'll see like you'll see the ejector feet modeled into the into the pylon. Roger. I'm gonna try and get a roll uh, going with them. Let's see if they let me let me roll with them. Standbys. Let me just get everything set up. There we go. I just got one to come off. So that there is beautifully showing how on a roll, of a kind of normal roll rate, she is just going to ping off. Because I think it just pings off so fast, there's just no chance of it hitting the wing. Look how, go, look how much that rolls. Bear in mind we're in eight times slow motion. Boom. And I just want to have a little look in the... In the so I know the stream is a bit behind, but I'm looking at the mechanics now of the, the hard point on the side of the belly. So in these body style racks, it's actually those U-shaped brackets that you see pushing them away. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you go to that centerline oh. pylon mm -hmm. a, little, a little bit up, uh, you can actually see plunger feet. Uh, yep. Like yep. If you, and um, that's what pushes them. Right. So this one has a plunger feet type mechanism. If I go back to the side mounts, the actual... Yep, right there. You see that? You see yep. that thing in the dead middle? Yeah. That's the plunger feet. Yep. Right. And now I'm just wondering if we get this really, really, really slow and see the plunge and see the see the things moving. Stand by. Yeah, that's what you mean. I'm going to give it, just give it, give it one more go. Let's see if we can get it. I don't think they have it modeled for the missiles because I was looking for it, but yeah. I'd be interested to see if they have it modeled for the bomb racks. Roger. I'm just and gonna... For another time. Yeah, no. The, the, they aren't modeled here uh, physically. But in, then again, it would move so quick, you'd never actually see it. Interestingly, how in this case, they're kind of going up. I would expect them to go up and outwards. It would push it at that angle that you see the... 45 the degrees. The body pylon. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever that is, yeah. Right, let's follow him up on his last trail. 
Look at that. So freaking cool. Boom. Off goes the motor and accelerates. Very cool. Right. Um, so, very quickly to summarise, uh, the F-22 we were looking at was showing off the fact that we can actuate the doors and fire the missiles. It, looking into the fourth gen planes, we were looking at the different difference between rail launchers uh, and, you know, intelligent decision of which rail launcher can fire under certain rotations of the plane, certain uh, G-forces and so on, and that appears to be modelled in DCS more or less as best we can test it. And we've also got that, what I'm going to call the pusher uh, type technique here, where we've either got plungers, which I'm trying to focus on there, or these kind of I don't know what they're called, but kind of oh, I can actually see the um, the piston that pushes the little uh, bracket out. So I can even see the pistons there that go into the body, and these are uh, due to chemical charge, force the missiles away from the body and allow us to fire in uh, a roll. Really good. Anything you want to add to that, Simba? Like I said, to add to your Valley viewers' question, demonstration of that video was to show that the F-22 is capable of firing missiles in a roll under a G load. Which, when you have doors in the way, that can complicate things. Mm. And they were showing that it's more than capable. Thank you very much, and we'll see you later.